Hi, this is Lucky Dad, and I'm going to be uh, playing the Replay Basketball PC uh, game just to show you how it's played. And this is from last season, and it's a game between the Boston Celtics and the Charlotte Hornets, and it's just the beginning of the third quarter, and Charlotte is ahead by five points. And I have turned off the game sound because I did a, a, vid a, a video of uh, an overtime game with PC replay basketball from 1970, and I didn't turn down the sound, and it totally ruined it. So uh, there is no sound in this video, but there is really nice game sound in the game itself. So just to keep that in mind. So. Uh, one nice thing about uh, PC Replay Basketball is that when you uh, start uh, each quarter, uh, I, I guess you can't see this unless you're going to sub, so uh, the next time I have a chance to sub, do a substitute, I can show you, but it'll show you who all the starters were in the game so that you can play the same starters, which may sound you know, like, well, why, why would that be important? Well, sometimes if you are, I'm pouring a cup of coffee, so maybe you can hear that weird sound. Uh, in some PC games, it doesn't tell you who started the game after you get in, you know, through the first half. And if you're playing uh, from a long time ago, you know, seasons way in the past, you may not be familiar with, uh, and if you're playing every game of the season, you may not be familiar with the teams to just kind of know this is who they would start and they don't even and you you can't go back and look and see who started so this is a nice thing with uh, PC replay basketball that I really like anyway uh, we're uh, 10 minutes and 36 seconds left in the third period and uh, Gordon Hayward uh, who was you know kind of like a major disappointment with the Celtics and they traded him then to Charlotte so I, I hope he's happy there just made a basket and uh, now uh, I you can hit action or you can just play enter and um, the um, the game continues on so now we see Jason I hit enter Jason Tatum has the ball uh, and he is, uh, I press enter again and it automatically rolls the dice or you can put the mouse cursor there and it rolls the dice. That's a 6-2. So that means you go to the sixth column and you look at the second uh, row, which gives you F2, which means if uh, the player guarding him, if you roll the six-sided dice down here and uh, it is a one because it's the one over here. That means there is no foul. But if it's a five, if it's a two through six, there is a foul. So most likely, uh, there is. Uh, well, actually, it's the opposite of what I just said. If uh, if if it's a one, there is a foul, and if there is a two through six, there it's a missed shot. So if you're coaching the Celtics as I am you're hoping that it's a one because then that'll be a foul but Hayward doesn't uh, draw many or doesn't commit many fouls so it's a very low number one is as low as you can get and this is again a really nice thing with uh, PC replay basketball you immediately see how Hayward how Tatum is doing in the game he's six for 18 not so great and that's probably why they're behind by four points and then you see that Hayward got the rebound uh, and this would kind of, if you're it, this is a direct port of the board game so uh, this uh, shows you that his defensive rebounding you can't quite see it because the I think the basket uh, it, it's it, if you look over on these other plays you can see they have offensive rebounding and defensive rebounding but you can't quite see it with Hayward now but it is a 12 actually I think it's a nine and then uh, there is a thing with, with the cards, uh, if you're playing the board game, that it adds three to this player. So, he, And that's just kind of a random thing so that it, it's not static throughout all uh, every time you play the game for every play where there's a rebound. And Tatum is only a six at 
uh, offensive rebounding. You can't see that here because the dice are up. Uh, but for instance, Grant Williams is a five, so he's not as good as Tatum. But anyway, uh, Hayward gets the ball, so uh, we move on, and uh, Hayward now has possession of the ball. We have 10 minutes and 12 seconds left in the quarter. I press enter. He has a four column, five row. That's a potential three point shot. And again, you can see here, uh, he's made two attempts with one basket and he needs to get a, uh, a, th a three and a one, three on the red dice, one on the white dice, so it'd be a 31. And you can see up here in the upper left-hand corner that the Celtics, uh, their three-point defense is really good because it reduces the number uh, that would be a successful three-point shot. So if you look down here at Hayward, normally he is a 32 over here, but because the Celtics have uh, better than average three-point defense, it's a 31. So he takes the shot, 53, it's above 3-1, he misses it. And Horford uh, gets a, a random plus five to his, as you can see up here, he's a 16 on defensive rebounding. And uh, he um, easily out-rebounds Plumley, who is a 13 at offensive rebounding. So now it goes back to the Celtics. And uh, there's a shot clock up here. Basically, the shot clock allows for three uh, of these action cards to be played or, or every 24 seconds is basically eight seconds except if there is an attempted steal or something like that that doesn't work <coughs> then that's no time off the clock so this this these are action cards that if you were playing the board game would get flipped and you can see it automatically goes to the small forward it's not always that way they have these numbers up here in the upper right hand corner that are called go to numbers and the lower the number, the more often a player would get the ball uh, if that was the case with the uh, action card down here. So Tatum is the person that the offense uh, most often goes through, and Grant Williams is the person, because he's got a five, who the offensive least uh, goes through the least amount of time. Okay, so Tatum takes the shot, and it's a 1-4, and that is a one column two row that's a two that's an automatic made two-point shot and uh, then you, you look over here and you see that it says uh, the assist would go to the center if his assist rating was greater than a one well uh, Horford is the center and you can see up here his assist rating is a seven so he gets the uh, assist, which is recorded here, and again, it's very convenient. You get to see that it's his fourth assist in the game. Tatum is now seven for 19, and he has a total of 19 points in the game. Now, if Horford had been taking the shot, he couldn't give himself an assist, so then it would go to the small forward. Uh, okay, now you see you have options up here as the game goes on. You could, uh, I'm not coaching Charlotte, so I really, uh, that's up to the AI to decide whether they want to press. Uh, and AP just up here means that you turn the game over to autoplay and it would give you some choices if you want to go to the end of the quarter and things like that. Now you can press on stats and that will show you how everybody is doing in this game. And uh, it'll also show you how much rest they need in the half. The rest uh, or fatigue is accounted for according to the first half and the second half. It, it resets at the beginning of the second half. You also have the opportunity to have players <coughs> play a safe defense if they're in foul trouble, but <coughs> there is a real uh, uh, penalty. I mean, it really <coughs> is something you would only do in a drastic situation, not something you would just normally do if they had one foul in the first quarter or something like that. Uh, also, this is kind of interesting. The minute plays shows you how many minutes, for instance, with Tatum here, uh, how many minutes they have played so far in the game, and then above it, it shows you what they average in terms of minutes for the game. So, uh, and then I guess, let's see, to turn it off, or to go back to the game, you just press stats again. Okay, so action, we continue on, and uh, 
Bridges, Miles Bridges is going to take the shot because now this is where you get the go-to numbers to come into play. It's It says coach's choice, but what it means here is that if you have a one, uh, you the one would have to take the shot. Now coach's choice, it's the AI that's coaching Charlotte, so the AI has decided that Miles Bridges would take the shot rather than LaMelo Ball. And uh, but if if it was the, if you were coaching Charlotte, then you would have your choice. Now, if you had no ones on the court, then you would have a choice of a two or a three. So Miles Bridges is going to take the shot, and uh, he now uh, this comes up because some teams <coughs> are good at like I just had explained. The Celtics are good at. <coughs> degrading the success possibility of a three-point shot because of their defense. But some teams are also good at not even letting you get the shot off because of the way they play defense. Uh, if it's a six up here and it's the same with Charlotte, it means that there really is no effect, that they don't have an exceptional ability to stop you from even taking a three-point shot. So I if, if it was if they had like a four or a five up here, then it could make a difference because then if let's say if it was a four, you roll the six sided dice. If it was a five or a six, they would not be able to take a shot. But because it's six, it's always going to be a, a possible shot. Now Bridges is going to take a three point shot. He's one for two so far in the game. His three point shooting percentage, and you can see here, it's very convenient. They list it. Clearly, it's, he's a 33% three-point shooter and a 26, uh, he needs a 26 die roll. And in fact, he needs a 26 die roll plus a five also on the blue roll. So that just creates a greater statistical accuracy. And already the Celtics have a minus one up here to uh, uh, reduce the uh, effectiveness of his three-point shooting. So. Uh, he's going to need a 25 or less. If it's a 25, then he's going to need, th then it'll roll. I mean, if it matches the 25, there'll be a blue die that comes up, and that blue die has to be a 1 through 5. So he takes a shot. Well, he missed it badly. And uh, there is a, uh, a tie for the rebound. They both come up 7, and I believe in a tie, well... I think in a tie it goes to the defensive player, but yeah, and it show, it goes to the defensive player, and you can see here, down here, it means that it's a defensive rebound, so that means Smart, in parentheses, has, has three defensive rebounds, and this is his third one. Now sometimes, he, uh, this also means that Smart has not had any offensive rebounds, because for instance, if it was a, like five in the parentheses, it'd mean he had five total rebounds in the game so far, but only three of them were defensive because that's what we're talking about right now. And now that uh, I have control of, of the offense, it gives me more options here. I can call a timeout. I can go into a hurry offense. I can go into a stall offense, or I can do what's called a call three where I call a play and I'm asking a player to take a three-point shot. Now, that is not always something that can happen. Uh, but if you're late in the game and you need uh, a lot of three-point plays to catch up or to win the game in the last second, you can do that. Also up here in the upper left, and it, it, you don't see this in the upper right because it's controlled by the AI, but right now I'm playing kind of a normal set. You could change it to crash the boards <clears throat> which makes it harder for a team to, well, it makes it more likely that you'll get a rebound. So you may want to do that if if uh, the teams are taking free throws at the end of the game and it's you desperately need the rebound. Or it also can cut down on teams getting out on a fast break uh, if you're playing a team that has a really good fast break. Or you can play safe if you don't want to foul. And... Uh, you can play a sag defense too to kind of clog up the middle. Now, now this black, this kind of brown, means that uh, if you have a green, that means you're really great at the fast break. Uh, and then 
uh, it can go from green. I can't remember what all the colors are, but uh, this is not good. And I think yellow and red are even worse. So uh, I won't really be doing any fast breaking with the team. It, when you get to the older seasons, you have more teams that are, are all green. And it, again, the game is very complex, although it has very uh, great playability. Uh, it's a little limited in strategy, but uh, it really makes up for it in how beautifully the gra how beautiful the graphics are and how easy it is to play. And uh, uh, I think it's just really great. Uh, and there is a lot of detail. And, and as, as you know, I'm kind of going over this fast. So now uh, Smart has the rebound, so he will take off. And you can see here it says point guard, so that's Smart. So we've got 24 seconds here. We'll see what Smart does. And now he is going to take, again, the first column here on all the cards are generally contested two-point shots. The second column are uh, three-point shots. The third column generally represents whether uh, 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 the opponent will uh, block a shot or not. It could also mean that they take a three-point shot. The fourth column involves whether uh, the player will allow his ball, his possession to have, uh, steal uh, the opponent to steal it or just commit a turnover. The fifth column uh, will emphasize uh, how the player passes the ball, if he gets a lot of assists, if he kind of plays one-on-one -on -one against his opponent and if he can be successful at that. And uh, the final column is basically how good the player is at drawing fouls. So it, it's, it's complicated. It, it's a little, it's more nuanced than that, but that's the general meaning of each of these columns. So smart, if, if he has a one, he'll, he will make a two-point basket. Uh, so it's an automatic two-point basket. It, it kind of means that instead of taking a three-point shot, he moved in closer to the hoop and made it had a good opportunity. It was uncontested. But if he is, uh, if it's a two to six, then it's going to be a three-point attempt. So it'll probably be a three-point attempt. He's two for three so far in the game. He's a 33% three-point shooter, which equates to a 26. Uh, he needs a 26 on the two-die roll. And if it's 26, it's got the blue die has to be a five or less. So he shoots, he misses. Now, there's a loose ball foul on Grant Williams. It's his third foul in the uh, third quarter. So there's no uh, free throw shot taken. Up here, you can see now the, the Celtics have two fouls. Charlotte has no fouls. Celtics have five timeouts left in the game. Charlotte has three. and. Um, if you get them into the bonus, it'll say bonus. Uh, so we're, uh, we don't really need to substitute. Now down here, you can also see the rest. Uh, the Celtics uh, all can, all only need six minutes rest in, uh, in the second half, except for Tatum, who needs three. In this particular game, Jalen Brown is not available, so that's why he's not up here. So when I get to the, below the six minute mark, I'll, I'll want to start substituting out these players. And there is some ram, uh, randomness called force rest, which forces you to rest a player earlier than you might want to. And that, that adds a certain element of randomness. And I, I believe then realism and believability to the game. It, 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 I, I really like that. Uh, if you don't rest the player six minutes in the game, however, then uh, all of their defense, instead of being up here where it says DEF, the lower the number, the better, it goes to B rating. So it's like A rating to B rating, and it's much worse. Also, I think they're penalized in terms of what they do up here if they go to that B rating. And if they get a forced rest, if that comes up kind of randomly, then they go to B rating immediately. So you want to get them out of the game. And, and once they have rested up, uh, It'll, the forced rest will not necessarily make them rest, like for instance with Marcus Smart, a full six minutes. It could be uh, four minutes or something like that, but you have to get them out of the game right away. But anyway, 
Now, uh, Williams has a loose ball foul, so it's going to go over to Charlotte. And it's coach's choice again between the two ones, LaMelo Ball or Miles Bridges. The AI chooses Bridges again. And I think the AI is choosing Bridges because this defense line here for Grant Williams is good. Any Anytime it, six is the worst, which you don't very often see, except maybe for somebody that fouls a lot. And uh, one is the best. So you can see he's really good, but Marcus Smart is better. In fact, this is Marcus Smart's play, Defensive Player of the Year season. So I think the AI is wanting to go with Miles Bridges because it's easier defense, easier, better matchup. So that's where you get the matchup. So now it's a three-point shot with a question mark. That means if it's a one through six on this die roll, uh, so it's, it's obviously going to be uh, a uh, three-point attempt, but it, you know, if, if you had a different team that uh, denied, I mean, that basically that it just looks and, and sees how many three-point shots a, a, a team permitted defensively, and if they have a really per game, uh, if it has a really low number, then you could possibly get a lower number here. Anyway, he's going to take the three-point shot. He's normally a 26, but because the Celtics are good at the defense for three-pointers, it's 25. He misses the shot, and there's a tie on the rebound. Now, here, here this shows that Schroeder has four rebounds in the game, and three of them are defensive. So he must have had one offensive rebound at some point in the game. And... Uh, Well, I, <laughs> maybe I was right. I don't know. I thought that Schroeder got the game, but I guess it was Tatum that got it, got the rebound. So my mistake. So Tatum is taking a, uh, got the offensive rebound, and he's going to take a three-point shot. He's three for seven. He needs a 31. He's a 35% three-point shooter, and he makes it. And there's no assist on the play. So now uh, it's a tie game. And... Uh, Charlotte comes down, and uh, there is a, a asterisk here. I think if, if that comes up and there's an asterisk up here, it means that uh, a team had fewer possessions per game than what would be typical. So I think it's going to impose a, uh, we'll see here. Yeah, it imposes a... Uh, 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 passing the ball. So instead of Plumlee taking it, they're going to go deeper into the 24 second clock. And actually, if a team had two asterisks, I, I think then uh, if they had a one or a two up here, but they, they only have a one, so I don't think it's going to factor in. Now, the action card is saying to go to Gordon Hayward. So Hayward takes a shot. It's blank. That's an automatic miss. He's four for nine. And uh, Horford gets the rebound. He's a 16. You can see it says 16. Plumlee's a 13. And uh, Horford has six rebounds. They're all defensive. Now, I'll just show you how the fast break works. So, uh, fast break, this comes up, and uh, it, it means that Williams, Grant Williams, is involved in the fast break. As the blue die is not higher than the fast break, his fast break rating. Now the blue die is a two, and over here you look at the fast break ratings. It's a four and a four. This is not good. Uh, so because his fast break rating, the first one is offensive fast break. The, the uh, second one is his defense against his opponent's fast breaks, uh, and the blue die was a two. If it would have been uh, a five or a six, then he would have maybe. Uh, could have taken the shot, it could have been an automatic basket, but it's less than a four, so he misses it automatically. He's two for seven, but he gets his own offensive rebound, and uh, that's just, uh, I'm not quite sure exactly if you were playing the board game how that would happen, but he gets the offensive rebound, and uh, the 24 second clock resets, and now uh, the play is going to go to the shooting guard, Schroeder, and Schroeder uh, 
gets a zero, and that means that he is going to take a three-point shot. And uh, he's 0 for 1 from three-point shooting. He's a 34% three-point shooter. That means he needs a 31 or less, and he doesn't get that. It's a 51. Bridges is a 12 on uh, rebounding, and uh, Tatum is a 11. And actually, uh, Tatum is only a 6, but they added 5 on here. But that still was not good enough to overcome Bridges on the rebound, and Bridges got his sixth defensive rebound, and apparently he has one offensive rebound. So Bridges comes down, and uh, the play goes to the point guard. The point guard is an F1. That means he draws a non-shooting foul. It's the third foul of the game on Smart. And now you see we have three team fouls. There's no uh, shot. I'm just going to play until we get down to six minutes so you can see how the uh, substitutions go. So we continue on. And now there is a substitution. You can see Kelly Obrey is coming in. And so you can make that stay longer if you like to see exactly what happens. But Kelly Oubre came in. Cody Martin came in. So they're starting their substitution patterns. But I didn't look. Maybe their players needed more rest. But anyway, we've got a coach's choice again. They go to Bridges again because he's up against Grant Williams. Bridges takes a three-point shot unless this is a one on the blue die. And it's not. So he's, he's one for four. He's not... Uh, he misses it. Now we have a chance for a fast break again. Uh, but actually, I don't think I'm going to take the fast break because the Celtics are just not very good at it. So we just come down. It goes to Horford, the center. Horford, now when it's an A, it means that he is a good passer. He has passed to somebody for an assist. And I believe uh, to find out who he passed to, you look up at the blue die here, it's a five. And then you come down here, and you go to five, and that says point guard. So it's the point guard that got the shot, and uh, Horford got the assist. So if you're playing, you know, if you're, the games, I suppose, take about half an hour to play if you're really playing them uh, without doing a lot of talking like I'm doing. But, uh, and you don't necessarily even, need, you, you see that Horford got the pass to Smart, Smart made it, you know, you, you don't really, you can check this out if you want. You can say, oh, why didn't Smart get it? Well, he got a five, uh, and the five is point guard. But if you're just playing the game, it's like, oh, Horford passed Smart. Smart made the basket. Okay, we continue on. Cody Martin, it says small forward, so he gets the ball. P just means he is going to pass, and that's going to take 12 seconds off the 24-second uh, clock. So now we draw an action card, and we see it goes to the shooting guard. That's Kelly Obre, and uh, Kelly has 12 seconds to shoot, sort of to do something. So he's going to take a three-point shot, just a straight-up three-point shot. He's one for one, and he makes it because it's 14, less than 26th. And uh, Ball got the assist, and I'm not quite sure. Oh, uh, yeah, you look over here, and it says point guard if he's got a 12 or better assist rating and uh, the point guard ball has an assist rating of 15 so that's higher than 12 and again if you're just playing the game on your own you're not going to track all this stuff down you can uh, if you're playing the board game you'd have to but that's one of the advantages of not of playing on a PC so the Celtics come down smart has the ball coach's choice but in this particular case the three go-to number is the one that has priority. It's not the one or, or two or one, uh, which is interesting. And uh, so it goes to Smart. He's the only three on the team. So he, so he just passes the ball. We're down to 12 seconds. So we, another action card. And uh, this time it's coach's choice, but it's got to be a one. And we don't really have a choice. Tatum's the only one. He takes a play, and now he's going to take a three-point shot. Uh, it's going to, you know, it's, the number's going to be one through six. So he takes the shot. He's four for eight, 31. He makes the shot. And uh, that assist goes to Schroeder, the shooting guard, has to have a six or higher assist rating as a 10. So now the Celtics are up by two. And uh, they come down. Coach's choice, this is a two. And Kelly Obrey is the only two. Now, the 
P plus means that he's going to pass the ball to, uh, I can't remember exactly how it's determined. I guess you go down here with the blue die roll and uh, the blue die roll says center. So it means he's passed the ball to Plumley, but it's a high percentage. It's a P plus. It's better than a P, but not as good as an A, because an A is an automatic assist and basket made. A P plus adds 10. It's called high percentage shot. It adds 10 to uh, Plumley's number that he's a 64% field goal shooter, which is very good. He's got a, a 46, but because they add 10 to it, it's a 56. So it's it's very high percentage shot he's going to take here, and he makes it, and Ubre gets the assist because of that. Okay, we've got one minute to go before I do assists, and that'll be the end of this video. So Schroeder, it says coach's choice two. Well, Schroeder is the only two. So Schroeder, now he, he has an A, so that's an automatic assist. So you look at two up here, and two down here is small forward, so that means the pass was to Tatum. He gets the automatic basket on a great pass from Schroeder. Seventh assist for Schroeder, 27 points for Tatum, 10 for 22. So the Celtics are coming back, and uh, now coach's choice four. Well, there is no four, so then you go to the parentheses, and it says, okay, your next possibility is a three go-to number. Well, there is no go-to number three, so then you go to one, and or you go to uh, well, two, you go to two, and, and there is a two. Oubre is a two, so he gets the play. And a P1. Now, down here, this means that if it's a one, he passes the ball. If it's a, a two or to six, he makes a three-point attempt. So uh, he is very unlikely to pass up a three-point attempt. So he's going to take the shot because it's above a one. It's a four. He's two for two, and uh, he's a 35% shooter, 31 normally. Now, these are dice, so if you're a 31 and they take one away, it doesn't go down to 30 because there is no 3-0 with a six-sided dice. It goes from 31 to 26, so he missed it. Now, if the Celtics had not had this minus one up here, he most likely would have made it. And I guess the ball goes out of bounds here, and in order to determine who get who gets the ball out of bounds, uh, the Hornets up here, you can see their home court advantage is a three, which is not so great because it means if there is a, a play like this where the ball goes out of bounds, if the if the dice is uh, above three, they get the ball. If it's three or below, the Celtics get the ball. Uh, a lot of times it's just automatic. They get the ball. So it's a three. It's not above a three. So the Celtics got the defensive rebound. We've got 30 second seconds to go before... I think I'll just go ahead and do a substitution so you can see what that's like. Okay, so uh, I press on substitution. Now, here are the players that are currently in the game. Here you can see the amount of rest they need. Now, let's say I'm going to put Peyton Pritchard into point guard. So I click on Peyton. He has the yellow shading. And then I click on Smart, and Peyton is, is in. And let's say I want to... Uh, Put in, and up here you, you have kind of a depth chart which the computer organizes. You don't have to follow it, but it helps you if you're playing the season to see who needs to play and who doesn't need to play. And uh, this says that it would be best to bring in Jabari Parker for Horford. So uh, I'm going to uh, you do the opposite click on Horford and click on Jabari Parker, and now that switch has been made. Now I think I'll just do those two. Uh, because uh, it's not, I'm, I still have 36 seconds, so these players will be ready to come in before the quarter is over. Now, also, here's where you would click. You can also click here to look at Charlotte. Uh, here's where it would show you the starters. Now, the, you would just click this at the beginning of the second half and it would put all your starters in. If you're late in the game and you want your best two point shooting lineup, you click this and it automatically organizes the best two-point shooters, three-point shooters, free-throw shooters, offensive, 
rebounding if, if you need to get the ball late in the game and you want your best offensive rebound. Same with defensive. So it's very, you know, very wonderful. Uh, I think this game is great. It's absolutely phenomenal. So then you do that. Now you can click up here to see uh, your box score. Very detailed. And in fact, it breaks it down by quarter. Right now, according to this, uh, Boston is 41% shooting and uh, Charlotte is 30. Just for the quarter so far, six minutes in. Uh, or then you go back to the full here. And you can do a recap, and that'll show you uh, a lot of key statistics here. This is for the full game. Uh, Boston is shooting a little less uh, percentage than Charlotte. Uh, and uh, Charlotte is really, uh, I mean, for the most part, I don't really know why uh, Char Charlotte is behind by a couple of points. I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, I guess Boston's three-point shooting is better, but then it also shows you Tatum so far is 27 points. The leaders, Horford, seven, Schroeder assists. That all looks great. Plumlee uh, is a little odd. He's leading in scoring. Scary Terry has 10 assists, and then you just close this out, and you save it, and uh, you're back at the game. So with that, I'll close out this demonstration of how PC replay basketball plays, and it's a really great game. You should buy it if you don't have it.